How dramatic this has become. A former NASA admin who once selected SpaceX's Starship for Artemis is now speaking out against it, igniting debate across the aerospace world. SpaceX, however, remains confident, backed by steady progress in testing and hardware development. What caused this sudden tension, and what does it mean for Artemis and Starship's future? Meanwhile, Blue Origin's new Glenn has completed testing for its second launch attempt, adding even more intrigue to the growing commercial space race. Let's uncover the full story in today's episode of Great SpaceX. A few years ago, NASA made headlines when it chose SpaceX's Starship to serve as the HLS for the Artemis program. At the time, NASA was led by Administrator Jim Bridenstine, who strongly supported the decision, calling it a bold step toward returning humanity to the moon. Yet now, in a surprising turn of events, the same man who once placed his trust in Starship has begun speaking out against it. This shift in tone became evident during the American Astronomical Society's Von Braun Space Exploration Symposium on the 29th of October. Bridenstine, along with another former NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden, participated in a panel discussion about the current structure of the Artemis program. Much of the conversation centered on SpaceX's Starship HLS, and the two former administrators raised concerns about whether the program, as it currently stands, can deliver on its timeline. Bridenstine voiced skepticism that the U.S. could return astronauts to the lunar surface before China's first crewed moon mission, warning that time was running out. The probability of beating China approaches zero rapidly, he said. We have to do something different. He went on to suggest that if the U.S. truly intends to land humans on the moon before China, NASA should take an approach modeled after the Defense Production Act, a wartime measure used to accelerate industrial output. If the goal is to beat China to the moon, he said, we need to have a program that is, dare I say, a Defense Production Act kind of program. We're going all in to build a landing system as quickly as possible with a small team that has authority, maybe authority put together by an executive order from the President of the U.S that this is a national security imperative that we're going to beat China to the moon. Bridenstine also commented directly on Starship's design and development, acknowledging its long-term promise but expressing doubts about its readiness. Starship is a tremendously important vehicle for the future, he said. It's going to deliver large mass to low Earth orbit for a long time, and it's going to drive down costs and increase access. But if you need a moon lander, it's going to take time. He also voiced support for acting NASA Administrator Sean Duffy's recent decision to open competition for the Artemis III mission, suggesting that a new lander design might be necessary to accelerate the schedule. Charlie Bolden, who served as NASA Administrator during the Obama administration, echoed Bridenstine's concerns. He pointed pointed to structural issues within the Artemis program and the need for better coordination and time management. Bolden ended his remarks by saying he believes it is possible for NASA to return astronauts to the moon by the end of the current presidential term if, that is, changes are made quickly. Both Bridenstine and Bolden also referenced Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander as a potential alternative for complaint blah, 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 alternative or complementary solution to help NASA meet its lunar goals sooner. Their comments, intentionally or not, seemed to question SpaceX's position at the center of the Artemis program and reignited the debate over whether Starship is progressing fast enough. SpaceX wasted no time in responding, SpaceX defended its record, and challenged Bridenstine's recent remarks. Mr. Bridenstine's current campaign against Starship is either misguided or intentionally misleading, the company stated. SpaceX was selected to design and develop a human landing system for Artemis, along with Blue Origin and Dynetics, during Mr. Bridenstine's tenure as NASA Administrator. The company further clarified how it earned its selection. Starship was then chosen by NASA for the Artemis III mission through fair and open competition. After being identified as the best and lowest risk technical option and the lowest price by a wide margin by the civil servant team appointed to lead the agency's exploration mission by Mr. Bridenstine himself. SpaceX also reminded the public that the decision was repeatedly reaffirmed, even after protests and lawsuits from competing companies delayed the program's progress. The decision to select Starship was repeatedly confirmed after protest and litigation from the companies not selected, which delayed the start of work on the contract for many months, the statement read. Finally, SpaceX concluded with a sharp rebuke. Mr. Bridenstine's recent musings promoting a new landing system, going so far as to invoke the Defense Production Act, are being misreported as though they were the unbiased thoughts of a former NASA administrator.
traitor. They are not. SpaceX's response did more than just defend its credibility. It was also a reaffirmation of Starship's progress and potential. Starship continues to simultaneously be the fastest path to returning humans to the surface of the moon and a core enabler of the Artemis program's goal to establish a permanent, sustainable presence on the lunar surface, the company stated. The latest batch of Starship HLS images has taken the aerospace community by storm, offering the most detailed look yet at the vehicle that SpaceX plans to use to return astronauts to the moon. These images are not just beautiful, they are historic. For years, enthusiasts and experts alike have speculated about what the HLS variant of Starship would look like, and now, at last, those details are coming into focus. The first two images show the Starship HLS full stack on the launch pad, an awe-inspiring sight that many have been eagerly anticipating. At first glance, it might appear similar to a standard Starship launch configuration, but closer inspection reveals several critical design differences unique to the lunar version. One of the most noticeable changes is in the forward section of the spacecraft. Instead of the complex array of features seen on previous prototypes, this version has a clean, streamlined appearance marked by a single thin black line. That line likely marks the separation between the fuel tank and the crew section. In the updated design, the traditional Starship cargo door is gone, replaced by a square hatch designed specifically to deploy an elevator system. This elevator will be used by astronauts to descend from the crew cabin to the lunar surface. Just beside this hatch, there is a row of small windows likely intended for observation, giving the spacecraft a distinctly human touch amid its immense scale. These details hint at Starship HLS's dual purpose, not just a machine for exploration, but also a temporary home for astronauts working on the moon. Moving down to the base, one of the most talked about aspects of the new images is the addition of landing legs, a practical solution for early missions where infrastructure on the moon is limited. The legs themselves appear to fold out from the base, painted black and designed with a mechanism that resembles the Falcon 9's boosters though inverted in deployment direction. This design ensures that Starship can land securely on the uneven lunar surface. Inside, SpaceX's new renderings and design updates reveal an interior far more refined and spacious than earlier concepts. The crew cabin now spans multiple levels, with stairways connecting them in the center for easy movement. The most striking feature is a high balcony overlooking large viewing windows, perfect for monitoring lunar operations or simply observing the majestic lunar landscape. Landscape. The layout looks clean, organized, and optimized for both functionality and comfort. Compared to earlier leaks, this configuration presents a more realistic and livable environment for astronauts who may spend extended time on the moon. According to SpaceX's latest technical documentation, the company continues to emphasize Starship's scale and capability. The HLS version boasts a habitable volume of 600 cubic meters, which is roughly two-thirds that of the entire International Space Station. It also features two airlocks, each with 13 cubic meters of volume, providing double the available space of the Apollo Lunar Module. This enormous volume allows Starship HLS to carry both a large crew and substantial cargo, with a capacity of up to 100 metric tons to the lunar surface. No lander in history, past or present, has ever come close to such performance. SpaceX reaffirmed the cost advantages of its fully reusable Starship system, emphasizing that it continues to self-fund much of the infrastructure to achieve rapid reuse at minimal cost. The rocket's simplicity and scalability are designed to cut launch prices dramatically, enabling frequent lunar missions and supporting NASA's long-term goal of a sustained human presence on the moon. The company reported 49 milestones completed under the HLS program, including life support testing, environmental control control demonstrations, Orion integration, and landing leg trials. The HLS capsule itself has been built, equipped with core systems, and is now undergoing final integration. Next, SpaceX plans to test in-space refueling, a key step for lunar operations, and debut the Starship V3 with upgraded Raptor 3 engines, major milestones set for the coming year as Artemis deadlines approach. These updates send a clear message. SpaceX remains confident in Starship HLS and intent on proving steady progress despite criticism and internal NASA debates. Every milestone reinforces one belief. Starship will return humans to the moon. 
Do you think SpaceX will achieve this ambitious goal on schedule? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Great SpaceX for more updates on humanity's journey to the stars. In the meantime, while SpaceX continues to capture global attention, its strongest competitor, Blue Origin, has been making remarkable progress on progress of its own. The company's massive orbital rocket, New Glenn, is finally nearing its long-awaited debut launch expected between November 9th and the 11th. A major milestone came on the 30th of October when Blue Origin successfully conducted a static fire test at Cape Canaveral's LC-36. For 38 seconds, the rocket's seven BE-4 engines roared to life, producing an incredible 1,700 tons of thrust, a powerful step forward on the path to launch. Both the company's founder Jeff Bezos and CEO Dave Limp celebrated the test, noting that engineers extended the burn to simulate landing conditions, shutting down engines in sequence to study fluid dynamics during throttle transitions, which is crucial for booster recovery. Blue Origin confirmed all engines performed nominally, signaling that the once-troubled BE-4s are finally operating reliably. The test came amid earlier reports of upper stage issues, but its success has restored confidence in meeting the early November launch target. Afterward, the booster was returned for inspection while integration continued for NASA's Escapade mission, which will study Mars's magnetosphere. The maiden flight aims to both deploy Escapade and land the first stage booster on an Atlantic drone ship. Success would mark Blue Origin's first orbital victory, prove New Glenn's reusability, and strengthen its position against SpaceX. It could also earn long-sought military certification, validating years of effort and investment. After years of delay, New Glenn is finally ready to fly, poised to redefine Blue Origin's future and reshape competition in the new space age. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.